I hear many people complain about the historical accuracy of Parthia in Rome total war, and rightly so, Parthia did not exist at the start date of 270 BC as an official, as an official uh, kingdom. However, there is one thing that many people point out to be completely ridiculous, the settlement in the top right corner, Campus Sacre. I see comment after comment about this settlement just being not historically correct. But here's the funny thing, that settlement, Campus Sacre, is actually the only accurate settlement for Parthia in a very odd way. It's actually the other two settlements, Susa and Siseka, which are inaccurate for 270 BC. Welcome to Tilt to War Profiled, a historical series which looks into the background of factions from Tilt to War's historical titles, it investigates their accuracy and then rates them compared to other factions. Today, as voted for by Patreons, we have Parthia in Rome, Total War. About the settlements, let me explain. First, we must begin by looking at the world before Parthia formed. This is a map of 270 BC. As you can see, no Parthia. It would not be until 247 BC, 23 years later, that Parthia gained its independence. The Parthia you see on your screen now was the original Parthia. Independence earned by a Greek cultured governor who worked previously with the Seleucid Empire. However, this new nation instantly became under threat. A people known as the Parni, who lived just north of Parthia, saw their opportunity on the new weak Parthia and swooped in, taking it for themselves. It will be these people who will go on to eventually create the Parthian Empire, most of you will know. Okay, so Melkor, how does this tie into the map? Well, we have to approach it differently. Instead of looking at Parthia's history, let's instead look back at the history of the Parni. The Parni during 247 BC lived just south of the east of the Caspian Sea. But they were believed to have originated from either southern Russia, what we would call today Russia, or Scythian lands. Where is that? Well, that's to the north of the Caspian Sea, roughly where Campus Sake is. Now the lands to the south are completely inaccurate for the time for Parthia, but the lands to the north, the one almost everyone thought was inaccurate, turns out to be the result of super in-depth historical research done by the developers of Rome Tilt to War. In a sense, it fits. I can see where they got their inspiration from. Was this land called Parthia? No. Was it ever called Parthia? No. But their inspiration is understandable and that it does make a lot of sense if you look at the culture of the Parthian royal family. They do have a direct tie or link with that land. Maybe Parthia would have been more historically accurate if they put a horde faction up there. Uh, like the Pani as a horde or something like that, and scripted it in to the campaign script so that Parthia gained their independence later on in the campaign. But given the limitations of the engine at the time, I can understand why they went with this option instead. Overall, the Parthians we know were ruled by the Pani people who originated from roughly around Campus Sakai. I am not saying that that makes a Parni Parthian, but rather that makes a Parthian Parni. And this all happened within about 50 years, meaning that it was the same generation um, or the next generation, so you cannot use the argument, well, we all descended from Africa, does that make us all African? You can't use that argument against me, uh, because, you know, that's thousands of years back. This was within roughly the same one or maybe two generations. Wow, I, I loved this when I figured it out. 
Um, it's not a perfect thing, but I, I can understand the developers, and that's what it's all about. Finding where the developers were inspired from. But we're not done with Parthia here. First, let's take a look into the, into the family. The faction leader is called Arsaces. Arsaces the first of Parthia. He is accurate, well, based off an accurate person. Arsaces was a party leader who invaded Parthia successfully and became the king of Parthia. Now, as for his children, there was very little here. Okay, literally nothing with historical accuracy. Some of his in-game children share names with former Persian nobles and monarchs, but I cannot see any clear historical link uh, that the developers got their inspiration from. Overall, I would say that they're all fiction. As for their military, again, there's not that much here. But in a way, it kind of works out even more accurate like that. The faction has cataphracts, which was the main attack unit of Parthia, but very expensive and they struggled to afford it. Um, I think they used to get the aristocrats to pay for it um, in exchange for like land or autonomy, stuff like that. Most of their army is missile cavalry, which is historical. They even have a Parthian shot named after them. Uh, that's just how much Parthia and missile cavalry go hand in hand. Their eastern infantry carry wicker shields, a small piece of historical detail some of you might find interesting. Overall, there's not much to the Parthian military, uh, which is actually kind of accurate, as from my research of Parthia's military, it's pretty dull historically. Uh, so I guess the developers got it right, just dull. <laughs> Now, as you may know, the Silk Road ran through Parthia. Now, this happened like 200 years after, or 300, even longer probably, um, after, um, after the start date. But it still, it brings in wealth. The highest level of roads for Parthia are called the Silk Roads, which I just found to be interesting. They had a reference to the Silk Road in there. Their temple is dedicated to Zoroastra, who was a spiritual leader who founded Zoroastrianism, a uh, religion of Persia and I believe Parthia as well. It provides a public order boost. I don't know really anything about this religion, uh, but I had a very quick skim read of uh, just some stuff and I couldn't find any. I couldn't find any reference to him and public order. Okay, now for Parthia, I decided to do something that I've never done before show you some quotes from the faction intro and discuss them. Invaders come here, but they do not leave. They do not understand the desert. They do not understand how it gives life. This one here is a reference to the many invasions led by the Seleucid Empire, originally to attempt to bring down uh, the Parthians um, as they just formed their nation. The, pa the Parthians would use the terrain, the mountains and the desert to their advantage. But then wealth flows through this land. And if our people have one failing, it is the love of wealth. It is sweeter than water. It is more powerful than the sword. For any sword can be turned aside with a gold coin. Gold will buy a thousand warriors. This quote here is a reference to both the Silk Road, bringing wealth, and it's also a reference to mercenaries that Parthia kind of relied on, rather than having a normal standing military like the Romans did. For Parthia, I also wanted to see how Rome too taught to war, handled for faction. Rome too is also as inaccurate, but one thing that I did find interesting is that one of their armies is called the Children of Parni, of course a reference to the Parni as discussed earlier. Now overall, when I originally was planning on doing this video, I think Parthia was going to get one star. That was my original plan, maybe two, but after discovering how much research the developers must have put in to find out about the Parni and I was about to say they didn't have computers then, but they're creating a video game, so that's that's certainly not true. Um, but research would have been di 
difficult at the time. What was it? 2004? Yeah, 2004. Developing at 2003 as well. So yeah, they wouldn't have had the internet like I do, so... But they would have, but, you know, it's not what it is now. So I do have to take into consideration that they did some research, they knew about the party, and put them in the game despite not having the resources that we have today. Overall, I don't actually know what to give them. I'm, I'm going to say three stars. We'll go, even in the middle, out of five, three stars. Yeah, I think that's fair. But yeah, Parthia really surprised me here. But still could have been done much better, I think. And that is everything. I found Parthia to be surprisingly more interesting than I thought it would have been. Um, again, as I always say, this series is not to teach history, but to try and find out what inspired developers. I never in this video said Campus Sakai was part of the Parthian Empire, only that it is shown like that in the game due to the history of the royal family of Parthia having a connection to that region. And the developers of the game were, I believe, inspired by that route. And that's what this series is about. It's finding about what the developers were thinking and what inspired them, not about actual teaching you history. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Please subscribe for more or share uh, this with anyone who you think might be interested. I think it's actually a really interesting one with that settlement. Because uh, so many people write wrong and now you can... Now you can rub it in my faces. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to make this series successful and a regular thing, but of course it does need your support with views, likes and stuff, subscriptions, to justify this series continues. Overall it's doing quite well, but uh, you know, I I'm really liking it and I really want it to become a main part of this channel. Hope you've enjoyed, hope to see you in next week's, and goodbye.